I could really go for some blood of Christ right now. <laughs> Me too. Imagine dipping this in the blood of Christ. Good thing we have water. <laughs> Holy water. That's that. Welcome back to Up Late Upstate. We sure are excited that you're here to join us this evening and can't wait for you to see what's in store for this episode. And you may have noticed that I am no longer being sat on by a Sydney Morgan. That's because we dueled it out in the McDonald's parking lot and I won this round. That's right. We are now in a custody battle and having to alternate weeks with the girls. I can confidently say that I will win again. Pick the time and the place, Sydney Morgan. All right, now slow down, Speed Racer. Let's take it one episode at a time. Speaking of the episode, let's go ahead and see what silly little sketches we made this week. Bring them in! Welcome to Divorce Court, Mr. Lawson. What's the situation here? Yes, my clients are Gene and Maddie and uh, Steph are looking to divorce their partners, Dave and Gibson. Okay, seems simple enough. However, my client, uh, Steph and Maddie, would still like to remain married to my client, Dave, but separately. Wait a minute, so, so what's going on here? My client, Gibson, is looking to separate from Steph and Maddie, but would like to remain married to uh, Maddie and Steph and Gibson. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Uh, but is looking to divorce from the, the whole polyamorous marriage situation altogether. Uh, but would like to stay with Gene? Uh, okay. You're following, I hope. Wait a minute, so you're telling me he wants to divorce her and him and she wants to divorce him but not him and she wants to divorce everybody and he wants to divorce nobody and there's a baby involved in this mess? What the Sam Hill are you folks doing? off my Snickers. No, it's my Snickers. Cut! No! No, this isn't working at all. I need to see your passion. This isn't just a candy bar. This is your life that's on the line. You need to fight for your candy bar. Dude, it's a Snickers commercial. Who, who cares? No, it has to be perfect. I will not let you drag the name of this multi-billion dollar global conglomerate company through the mud with your terrible no good acting. Okay. We hear you. Sorry. Hey, Abe. Hey, John, is that a Snickers? Don't hit my candy bar, Konami. John, what the hell? John is a husk, a corpse. You can call me by my true name now. Judah Mayes. I'm really loving the commitment, John. You dare. Go before your daddy. <laughs> All hail to the maze! All hail to the maze! All hail to the maze! You know what was really missing from the last episode? What's that? Commercials! I know, right? I really miss those things. We should watch one. Let's do it right now. Okay. <laughs> Hi, 
My name is Melissa Weddle and I'm Department Chair of Recreation Management and Physical Education at Appalachian State University. We offer two degree granting programs, one in Recreation Management with a focus in Outdoor Experiential Education, Recreation and Park Management, and Commercial Recreation and Tourism. Our second degree granting program in Health, Physical Education, and Coaching offers teacher certification for public schools in health and physical education. You can get a minor or certificate in coaching. We are the front porch to the Beaver College of Health Science, where our focus is on quality of life, wellness, and physical activity. We're located in the beautiful mountains of Boone, North Carolina. So come join us, check out our website, or take a class. Welcome back to a brand new smack dab season of App TV's own queer oriented show, Can't Think Straight. I'm Nate. And I'm Harriet. We'll be here to make you laugh and think as we combine comedy and education on Can't Think Straight. The show premieres Fridays at 9 p.m. You can tune in on WatchAppTV.com or on YouTube, Channel 198 for Spectrum customers, Channel 20 or 1020 for SkyBus customers, and Channel 23-3 on campus. Also be sure to check out our Instagram at Can't Think Straight App TV. We can't wait to see you there. Bye. Bye. Broadcasting from the Wayne L. Sumner studio in the George G. Beasley Media Complex. Still crazy after all these years. 90.5 WASU, the app FM. Welcome back to a brand new season of the Morning App every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Check it out on 90.5 WASU FM, WASU Radio.com, WatchAppTV.com, WatchAppTV on Facebook and YouTube, SkyBest Channels 20 and 1020, Charter Channel 198, and Campus Channel 23.3. See you there. <laughs> You know what I love to do? What's that? Tell scary stories in March. Me too. I like being at a campfire and putting a flashlight under my face and making it look all spooky. Well, have you ever heard of the wheelie man? Who lives on Drury Lane? What? No. The wheelie man. Now, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. The wheelie man's got Black wheels like a doll's wheels. And he rolls down that hallway a creaking and a cranking. And then he gets ya. He gets ya! I remember the Willy Man. It was really scary. One time the Willy Man ran over my toes. It was sandal season. The Birkenstocks couldn't handle it. Well, let's hope he doesn't come out tonight. I remember when I came out. Look, a sound. It's the, it's the wheelie man! We got Hey, pull! There's no time. Go, no. Was that the, 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 the wheelie man? The wheelie man? He was dead. Dude. Oh my god, he's... What? I didn't even know that guy, but he was he sounded kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, he was weird. Yeah, we he's still out there? We talked about battle bots. Oh, <laughs> What are we doing? What are we doing? We're not doing right. All right. I should have gone left. <laughs> Is he okay? Oh my god. <clears throat> I think he's dead. He fell over like a oh, toddler. No. Oh my god, look at him. He's like a turtle on his back. It's kind of sad. It's over. So yeah, so let's, let's, go. let's leave. He's got it. Refreshing taste of a Pepsi. Come dude, on, we gotta go. Dead, it's dude. coming, dude. Do 
gonna have to rock a small PP though, so I'm gonna hit the little men's room real quick. Um, I'll come back for you. I'm gonna go down the stairs. Rendezvous somewhere. Bye. Bye. so much news these past two weeks. I agree, Hannah. Imagine if we could add our own spin on what the media tells us. Well, that's what we're here to do. Let's get into those headlines. During a recent speech in Poland regarding the Russian-Ukrainian war, President Biden stated that Putin cannot remain in power. The White House was quick to clarify that Biden's remark did not mean the United States would actually attempt to change the regime. I mean, come on. Does that really seem like something we would do? Jenny Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and doppelganger of every substitute teacher, repeatedly urged White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows to overturn the 2020 election results. She would have asked her husband for help, but all he does is sit around in his robe all day and play with his belly button wind. A woman was recently stuck in an Australian bush and survived after being there for two days. She claimed that the crabs weren't as annoying as she thought they would be, but could definitely go without the herpes. This week on TikTok, a girl shared that her eye popped out from the strain of giving birth. In an attempt to give back to the community, she's willing to donate her eye to Haley Bieber, so she is still able to keep an eye out for Selena. Great day for feminism, am I right? A 21-year-old woman in Philadelphia was arrested for killing three people while driving under the influence. Prior to the accident, she tweeted about how she's the best drunk driver ever. Remember, kids, basing your whole personality around alcohol is uncool, unhealthy, and worst of all, annoying. Keep your humble brags humble. In other news, What a Girl Wants star Amanda Bynes got what she wanted. This week, her conservatorship has officially been terminated. I tried calling her to congratulate her, but when I reached out to her team for her number, they replied with 1-800-BIOTCH. When I called the number, she didn't answer. But your mother did. Scientists discovered microplastics in human blood samples for the first time ever, which is, for lack of a better term, really bad. However, at least now I can sit at the same table as Regina George. A massive ice shelf collapsed in eastern Antarctica, which has climate scientists worried about what's to come. The region has been shrinking gradually over the past few decades, and it's only a matter of time before the ice caps melt completely and the sea levels rise by hundreds of feet. But don't worry about this. You have an econ exam tomorrow morning that you still haven't studied for. Right-wing commentator Steven Crowder went undercover as a female fat pride activist to address an academic conference, and no one knew that it was a joke. He thought he would not be taken seriously, but instead was met with more kindness and acceptance than he's ever received thus far in his miserable life. We can all learn a lesson from Steven and his new journey. Some pranks are better left for therapy. North Korea recently tested a new long-range intercontinental ballistic missile for the first time since 2017. Try saying that three times fast. This new missile is potentially capable of dropping a nuclear warhead on the United States. Personally, I don't really care for sour candy, so maybe he can, like, send airheads or Jolly Ranchers instead? It has been rumored that Doja Cat will be quitting music after a Twitter war with fans in South America. During her tour, Miss Cat had to cancel her Paraguay appearance due to flooding, leading fans to be very unhappy with her. To be fair, she did try to perform underwater, but it was hard to sing with a snorkel in her mouth, and the audio didn't sound that good. Plus, the crowd died, so there was really no point anymore. I'm looking at you, Travis Scott. Britain's oldest truck driver just turned 90 and doesn't plan on slowing down anytime soon. Brian Wilson has been driving for the past 70 years, still gets up at 4 a.m. every morning for work, and by mid-afternoon, he's usually plowing through a daycare center. Keep up the great work, Brian. We're all so proud of you. Vladimir Putin recently compared himself to J.K. Rowling, stating that the two of them were both simply victims of cancel culture. Not to diminish the hateful things that J.K. Rowling said, but starting a third world war is a little a bit different than being too ignorant to understand the concept of gender. Gwyneth Paltrow's former right-hand woman slams Goop's philosophy calling what the company stands for as toxic. She accused Paltrow of using the pink sludge that was rumored to be in McDonald's chicken nuggets as the base ingredients for her products. Oh, and Paltrow called her a bitch. 
Duke and UNC are facing each other in the final round of March Madness. Let's hear some state pride for App State students' top two school choices. That could have been me up there with those blue boys if I only continued my church basketball career. I was so good, they only let me play the last 30 seconds of each quarter. Last Monday, a violent storm system caused 25 tornadoes to touch down in Texas, destroying over a thousand homes. If last year's winter storm proved anything, it's that Texas is well prepared for weather-based emergencies, except for Ted Cruz, who has been spotted collecting coins at a Dave & Buster's in Florida. The Marilyn Monroe movie is the first Netflix film to have an NC-17 rating due to the amount of sex. Are we finally going to get the Marilyn Monroe JFK sex tape we've all been dying for? Because I'm tired of watching Rob Lowe's. And I like my porn to make me feel like the two people are definitely going to be murdered at the end. Ezra Miller, known from the perks of being a wallflower and The Flash, was arrested in Honolulu last Sunday after making a scene at a karaoke bar. The actor became enraged after patrons began singing the hit song from A Star Is Born, Shallow. But dude, it's not that deep. Kelly Clarkson has revealed that she has legally changed her name to Kelly Brienne. Like I don't even know her anymore. How is she still going to be the host of her show, The Kelly Clarkson Show, or host that stupid American Song Contest show? I loved you on American Idol, now you're Kelly Brienne? That's the most trailer park redneck name I've ever heard in my- Bruce Willis has recently announced his retirement from acting due to his aphasia diagnosis, which is when you lose the ability to comprehend or formulate speech. Thank God we have an abundance of bald white actors to take his place. Howie Mandel, it's your time to shine. And finally, CODA, which stands for Child of Deaf Adults, won Best Picture at the Oscars this year. This is a huge and heartwarming moment for the deaf community. Funnily enough, my friend Olivia here knows ASL and can teach us some sign language. Thanks for having me. It's such an honor to be here. As someone who experiences hearing loss, how did it make you feel to see a movie like this win such a prestigious award? Well, Chris Rock did get slapped by Will Smith. Anything else? Do you want to say anything about the movie? Maybe you could tell us in sign language, like we agreed on? Oh yeah, right, right. Hang on. Okay. Okay, yeah, me too. I also thought it was really touching for mainstream media to include representation for those with hearing loss. Even more amazing is how CODA was the first movie made by a streaming service to win not only one, but three awards. Isn't that just incredible? Two years ago, Parasite was the first foreign film to win Best Picture, and now this. CODA and Parasite have both blazed a trail for potential upcoming films regarding communities that are often overshadowed by mainstream, big-budget action franchises. The fact that CODA won Best Picture is a sign that other communities can also have their voices amplified and rewarded on a national stage. And I'm excited to see what other stories people around the world have to share. What do you think? That seems to be all the time we have for headlines. Thanks again to Olivia for sharing some ASL with us. I can't wait for everyone to see the rest of the episode. Also, Will Smith is a bitch! <laughs>for sports wrap on 90.5 WASU FM. Unpredictable. NC State can be on a That is true. I feel like they do have one of these games yeah. in this part of the season every year. I'm not going to get into a big discussion about expanding it. I definitely think it should be maybe capped at eight teams, maybe I six. Think six because 228 yards on the ground as compared to a total of 55 for Coastal Carolina. I count one team on the, on, of the six games that they have played this year that was in the playoffs last year. Do you like video game news and entertainment? Well, App TV's original gaming news channel, Pixel Peak, is back for our eighth season. Every other week, we discuss news stories, give a game review, display gameplay, and more. Be sure to check out our new season bi-weekly on Thursdays at 3 on WatchAppTV.com, SkyBest Channel 20 and 1020, Spectrum Channel 198, or on App State's Campus Television Channel 23.3. Thanks for stopping by, and we hope to see you next time on Pixel Peak. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Tracy St. Tracy, and welcome back to Tracy's Takes. I'm Tracy St. Tracy, and today we'll be discussing politics. The definition of politics is the activities associated with the governance of a country or other area, 
especially the debate or conflict among individuals or parties having or hoping to achieve power. To me, it's just an excuse for my dad to yell at the TV. A lot of people ask me, hey Tracy, what party are you affiliated with? Uh, my boy Andrew throws ragers on the weekend, so probably Andrew's party. Honestly, the worst part about politics is the debates. We should kill bad people. Uh, we shouldn't kill bad people. In my humble opinion, the most badass president is definitely Andrew Jackson. Talk about an empty dumpster. This has been Tracy's Taste with Tracy St. Tracy. Hi, my name is Abe, and this is Coffee Reviews with Abe. If you know me, I'm sorry about that. But you also know that I always have some sort of caffeinated drink in my hand, whether it be an energy drink or my true love, coffee. Why is that, you might ask? Well, I have a crippling caffeine addiction that has formed over the greater part of the last decade that I cannot shake and haunts me every day. Oh, and I also like the taste. Today we're reviewing my go-to everyday coffee, regular donut shop. You may notice that this is name brand, and that's because unlike with my health insurance, I do not skimp when it comes to coffee. Let's try it out. Oh yeah, look at that coffee go. Heck yeah, coffee. All right, so I have my cup of coffee. Let's try it out. What's that? Open it. It, you idiot. I don't remember buying a Snickers creamer, but I guess I gotta try it out now. I don't I don't know where this came from. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Oh, that's so good. I don't feel so. Snickers, you're not you. You're not you. You're not you. Hannah, what's your favorite beverage? Um, I don't know. I guess I like water. Would you say you love water more than anyone? 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 Wait until you get a load of this guy. He loves water. Wait, what are we talking about? Welcome back to Creepers Jeepers. Today we'll be discussing hydrophilia. Hydrophilia is the desire of water so much that it could make you die. The case of hydrophilia I will be discussing occurred at George G. E. Beasley Media Complex. Trigger warning, the following footage is disturbing. <laughs> Hey. Hey. This bystander tries to intervene and help the fiend, but the fiend won't listen. Don't. But I don't. Must. Don't. No. I want don't. to. You can't. You can't stop me. Hey, stop it. I'm gonna, You're fine! I'm gonna do the Heimlich on you if you don't stop. I'm okay. Get away from me! You hit me with my shin, dude. I don't care. I cry his shin. Cry about it. <coughs> Hydro fiends display a lot of aggression when their source of water is tempered with. <laughs> Look at his goofy little tantrum after having an unnecessary gallon. These fiends are so bizarre, they would rather be put in a sleeper hole than stop drinking their water. 
It's time to step away from the water fountain. It's time to step away from the water fountain. Oh, God. From the water fountain. What a friggin' weirdo. Could somebody else please try to do something? He's gonna kill himself. I don't... I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Just try to talk to him. Little does Jenna know, water fiends don't negotiate. Okay. Oh! Please, stop. This isn't working. I don't want to. You're, you're endangering yourself. You're I am the danger! <laughs> I don't remember this happening in Breaking Bad. I can't believe he just sucker punched Jenna. He punched her so hard. It was kind of funny, but he's becoming a real menace. We have to do something about this. The water fountain's making him too strong. It's making him way too strong. We need to get him away from the Let's water go. fountain. Let's go. The water fountain's making him too strong. Too yes. strong! It's too Grab strong! Grab his legs! Get, up. You guys get out of the water! Oh, Jason! Oh, no more no water. water for you! you oh. Such desperation. He's completely losing his mind. They think they solved the problem, but little do they know the fiend has moved on to a new source. Where's he going now? He's, he's good for this! He's gonna go pee, dude. Okay. He has been drinking a lot. Is there water in there? <laughs> what fools these creatures are. Jason, don't Jason, do this! No! Jason, it's not too late. You don't have to do this. Please. We know there's water in that toilet. Little do they know, it's too late for this hydro fiend. Wow. You're a source of water! Oh, oh no! He's no. so young, I just assumed. Are you okay, Jenna? Yeah, Tommy. Who's Tommy? Me. We should probably take her to Fast yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, Jen. How many fingers? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> With no one to stop him, the Hydro Fiend will now commence his Aqua Salvation. It wasn't but potable. In summary, don't drink water because it might kill you. <laughs> Well, thanks for staying up late upstate. We hope you enjoyed the episode, learned some ASL, and maybe laughed a little bit. Normally, we end this with a song, and our favorite producer, Joe Basie, wrote some down for us right here. So, thank you, Joe. We're going to be referring to this probably. Okay. So, thanks for watching. Now we sing. All right. Okay. Lots of skits and headlines, too. You can watch the Uplay crew every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Watch on YouTube or TV, Spectrum 23.3. Remember when we watched Uplay Upstate? We still get so many laughs. Looking at these photographs, remember when we made these memories?